Okay, so welcome to the next level session. We do these every um, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 4 p.m. East. Now, today we have a guest, uh, Heather Bowen. Hello, Heather. Hi, how are you doing? Hey. Uh, so Heather is, I'm going to plug your, your business here. Um, it's Virtual Realty Assist, right? Mm -hmm. uh, VirtualRealtyAssist.com. And you've worked with conversion users and KV Core users probably for as long as I can remember, five or more years now? But, yeah, it's actually been about six years now yeah yeah cool um so we were talking last week and you showed me some examples of some stuff you were doing uh to help people get newsletters out and also you're doing a little bit of blogging some other things too right yeah, absolutely yeah for content for the for, newsletters and their blogs for yeah content newsletters blogs i know you you're you do a lot of uh isa uh not i sorry uh virtual <laughs> assistant type stuff i don't know if you do isa stuff um, and you know, if anybody's looking for anybody, we do have our setup services in KV core, uh, but also we do have a thread in the main Facebook group where, you know, we are happy to endorse people who we know are going to do a good job. And Heather, you're one, you're one of the ones I always bring up because Thank you. <laughs> you just start great things about your service. Everybody you work with seems pretty happy. So, Thanks. um, so that, out of, that out of the way, um, what I was hoping Heather could do was maybe share some of the things you're doing and that the thing that interested me. Uh, more, most specifically, was the weekly or monthly newsletters you're sending. Do you want to tell us a little bit about those? And uh... Yeah, so a lot of my clients just want a way to keep in touch with their sphere or keep in touch with all sorts of people that, um, you know, all the leads that they've got coming in. And, you know, I always have them do the market reports and do um, listing alerts and whatever, but I think that it's important to have kind of your face front and center and remind people who you are and what you do on a regular basis. And also, you know, give good information to your um, leads and clients and that kind of stuff so that they can kind of see you as a resource and also see you as a local resource too. So a lot of what I try and do in newsletters is keep it as local as we can um, because people tend to, you know, interact with that a little more than just very generic, you know, oh, interest rates are down this week or whatever, you know, so, um, so yeah, so basically what I do for my clients is, and I can, um, yeah, yeah, you can take the screen if you want to show examples, because it's definitely going to be better if we, <laughs> people have a free um, reference. You need to let me, or you know, yep. so I stopped, you should be able to grab it now, are you not able to? Just a second, it's, um yes there we go okay and so i will put this up here there's this is just one um when i do it for my clients i always get them a header and we do like a footer and some links down here usually you know what your home is worth um searching homes for sale these are always stagnant not stagnant and i mean they're always there on every newsletter that goes out and then we just change out um, the content on them. So I will, you know, change out the picture. This is, all, you know, this is in Boise. So I try and keep it within the um, season of what's happening. This is the latest one for spring. Um, I do a little blurb sometimes about the market if that's something they want. Other times they want to talk about the market. Um, this is a example of one of the blogs that I do for them. So this is about, um, this is, National Craft Distillery Day, like who doesn't want to know where their distilleries are <laughs> and yeah. find out where you can have a good drink. Um, and it's also, um, I think, really great when you're doing local blogs to tag, well, I don't do it here. I mean, you can these link out to the, um, the actual distilleries. And if you click read more, it's going to drive you back to the blog on their KV Core website. But also when I post to social media, you can tag the people that you put in your blog, the um, businesses and they really appreciate that because you're kind of giving them a shout out and then a lot of times they will share your blog to their facebook pages and whatnot and it's just a good way to get organic um distribution of your blog post and uh, have other people driving back to your to your kv core site cool so if you can you click on that or is that is that a live link or just a picture yeah, no. yeah. yeah you click on read more and then it would go to this is the um the blog post in on his KV Core page. Awesome. So that that's a good, you know, just a, kind of a best practice for everybody is you you create the content on your blog as Heather's doing here, and then you use your emails and, and other things going out to link back. Um, right. And this is sort of a template you follow with 
with most customers where you, you try to have a unique piece of content like this, or is it just vary by who you're working with? Um, it's, I would say 50% of the time I'm doing a unique blog, obviously, you know, it costs more for my writer to write mm -hmm. a blog that has unique content like that. Other, um, people just use like a keeping current matters or, a you know, risk media or something like that for content, in which case I can still put it on their blog and still link back to it, but it's not as local. It's not as, um, original. And I always say original is better and but that's yeah. just me. <laughs> well, there, for a lot of reasons. I mean, it, you're you're going to have the SEO benefit of just having original content on your site. Yeah, for to start sure. to start with. Um, and uh, again, the plugs. That, that's a, an interesting thing. When you syndicate content, when you create it, you, as you mentioned, you're probably on you're going on Facebook and LinkedIn and other channels for them, and then tagging. You want to talk about that a little more? Yeah. So when you're on Facebook, um, let me see if I can. I mean, I think everybody probably knows how to tag on Facebook, but maybe they don't. Yeah. Um, if you were to, just over here, um, like if you were going to post this blog on your Facebook page, my internet is slow when I run Zoom. <laughs> yeah, it, this happens a lot to me too, <laughs> trying to go to Facebook and other, yeah. Um, but yeah, if I was to put this on, uh, well, I put it on your business page. So the way I do it is I put it on a business page and then I share from the business page to the personal page or have my clients do that, depending on what kind of access they've given me so that, you know, your business page is always following it as well. But, um, but if you're going to go ahead and, and put this up, then, um, I don't know why it's not preloading the picture. It usually does, but, yeah. uh, you would like this. Koenig Distillery, you would say, hey, um, you know, check out all the great distilleries. I can spell, I promise. That's all right, we get it. <laughs> um, including, you know, and then you can tag them. So usually it depends on, um, sometimes you can just start typing out the name and you can, it'll start doing it. Other times I have to go to the actual page and find out what their handle is for Facebook because it, it won't work. Um, K-O-E-N-I-N-G. Let's see if it will do it. K-O-E-N-I-N-G. Um, it'll start pre-populating it usually, but again, like my internet is slow because of. Yeah. Here. But what that does is it lets the business owner know that the agent is talking about them. Correct. And not only are they talking about them, but it will have a, it will be linked in there so that we, it, if someone sees your link, your post and wants to click on Koenig Distillery, they can and it will take them right to their Facebook page. So you're actually doing advertising, you know, linked advertising for that um, business as well. Yeah. And so I think if you do that on a regular basis, businesses really appreciate it and um, will start sharing your stuff as, as well and follow your page. I see a lot of people like just a business will follow their page just because they, you know, mentioned them one time. Reciprocate. And, gonna, and, and yeah. you're also, you're building top of mind status with people who have influence in the community too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, I mean, it might not be a ton of top of mind status, but they're at least aware that you exist. And it could be somebody who knows you already and, and leads to a referral. Um, exactly. So um, th this is what happens. Like you'll get a drop down, and it's not really coming up yet. Again, yeah. like this is loading, so I can't tell you, but usually sometimes if you go to their face, their actual um, website and you go to their Facebook page from their website, you can see what they're at, whatever it is. And it, sometimes it's different than what their actual name is <clears throat> so that you can do it and it will tag properly. So, but there's this whole thing, you know, so you create, you create the content first and then there's this series of steps you can take to really leverage the content. Um, right. so, so this is one of them. Um, the, there's an SEO benefit too. I, I was just thinking, as you were saying that Google's algorithm does like social signals. So there's this interlinking effect <laughs> when they see the link from Facebook coming back to you, it could help your other SEO. Um, and you linking out to other businesses in your area could help your SEO. So I just want to bring that up too. Um, are you, I think Heather's, uh, Annalisa, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So it looks like Heather's uh, system might have seized up. She'll probably be back in a second. Yeah. Um, and then when Heather's back, let me bring up my screen again here. Um, and while everything's resetting, just so everyone knows, I have linked you all to our articles on 
our newsletter tool for scheduled mass emails, the different templates that we have that are pre-built that you can pepper information into or use as is with new listings and open houses and all that good stuff. And then how to create a blog and also writing tips for blogs that kind of go hand in hand with what Heather was speaking to on whether you have an ISA do it for you, a uh, hired assistant or you do it yourself or hire uh, her to engage uh, with your services. Sorry, I lost uh, everybody there. Uh, it's okay. Um, you can't help sorry, it. It totally kicked me off. <laughs> yeah, you, you froze in mid like, eh. And then <laughs> so um, what I thought it might be cool too. So once you get this content together, Heather, I was hoping maybe we could show everybody where you go. You know, I think a lot of people know but how, your process for getting the newsletter out. I assume you're using the, the advanced editor. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I love the advanced editor. To me, it's just like a, it works just like MailChimp, which is awesome. Um, as far as the, let me see if I can share my screen again. Yeah, and oh, if you want, I can drive with... here. If you're worried about your system, you could just tell me where to go to if you want. Oh yeah, so I, I would go to, um, you're gonna go to marketing and then you're gonna go to your campaigns. Oops. There it is again. There we go. All right, I've been I've been dealing with uh, we're having technical difficulties today, guys. All week, kind of, on these sessions, uh, I keep getting logged out. So we're gonna go to marketing, uh, smart campaigns. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then and you're gonna go. Are you putting the actual uh, newsletter email out as part of a campaign? No, I just do a mass emailing every every time we do it. I, I usually set up some kind of filter. Okay. Based on just usually it's just everybody in your database that has a valid email that's subscribed, you know, and I'll make that filter so that we can send the mass email out. Um, oh, but you go so. here to build a template. Is that what you were? Correct. Yes. Okay. All right. I get it now. So, so click on yeah. templates. So I go to templates and then you're going to go to add template for email. And then you're going to use the advanced editor button. Yeah. And this is where you, you yeah. start to design everything. Um, right. And it's just like a drag and drop situation. Like I said, I'll, you know, usually do a, a header at the top and then, you know, um, yeah, and it might be good. Just try, you want me to do? Yeah, you want to show your screen again? I could see, I, I think people would enjoy seeing some more of the examples because what you're doing is, uh, so keep this in mind, everybody, but, or if you want to send me links, Heather, either way, uh, you're kind of mixing the content that the client is giving you and just following this flow that I think makes a lot of sense for a newsletter. And it doesn't seem hard to do. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not yeah. hard to do. It's just about, you know, getting the content. And then, especially once you've, made the your first one then it's just all about you can just clone it over and then change the stuff out you don't have to like do this whole thing every single time would you be able to show that on your screen like in a live kb core account yeah let me just go in a spot i'll give you a few minutes to log in and then you can take the screen away um just find somebody but basically guys the advanced editor so it's right here uh everything you saw in that first example and heather's going to show us more can be done by just dragging these blocks in to the system. Um, if you have core video, and I know some of you, I saw you had one example, Heather, where somebody is using yes, core video. I love core video. Yeah. So you and, can go ahead, Alex. Well, I was going to say, don't forget, if someone's not familiar, they're like, oh, what am I dragging over? We do have a pre built newsletter template if you do a keyword search in the template area. So you can build your own like she is, or you can just type in newsletter into the template name and it should come up with a match. Gotcha. It might take a second here. Yep. Well, isn't that fun? I think that's because you're nationally. I think uh, but so. what you, yep. yeah, but you can build your own or you can go into the scheduled mass email. And I believe that's where the template's probably going to show up a little quicker. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll be quiet now. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to share my screen. Uh. Okay. Everybody can see this here. Um, yeah. So yeah, so if you go to the advanced editor, I'm gonna take this down and take this down. Stop. Okay. 
So yeah, so the first thing I do is bring the header over and then you're gonna browse for your uh, picture. And so I do most of my pictures and, and my headers and stuff in Canva. It's really easy and it's, you know, unless you're doing something crazy, it's kind of mostly free. I, I mean, I pay for the other version because I do a lot of stuff, but um, this is the same one we were looking at. And you either you're gonna have one already in there or you're just gonna use your upload button to okay. upload a picture. Um, I mean, I could just pick a picture here, I don't know, um, and upload. And that's how you upload a picture into, why did it not do that? Open, there. And so you could upload that picture. And then when you want to insert it, you could, you could just hit the insert button. So I'm gonna actually find his header and insert it instead. Do you get notifications for all the realtors you work with on their pages? Yes. So do I. <laughs> Super fun. <laughs> um, yeah. So like, and you know, you can do different things. Like this is like a happy holidays one we did for the holiday one or whatever you want to do to change up your headers or whatever. But um, you put your header in. And then, um, like I said, on this guy's, I did like, a. Um, you go back to content. You can do, like I said, a core video, which I do a ton with, with my clients. And I really think that that's, he doesn't have core video or I would do it here, but um, I really think that's a great way to put your face to these people yeah. because they're getting stuff from so many different agents. They're seeing your face. They, they kind of feel like, I know it sounds weird, but it's totally true. Like they feel like they know who you are after watching videos from you all the time. Yep. So, um, and if you don't want it there, you would just go ahead and delete that. But it's then, really, really easy to integrate. And you can record right from the dashboard too, if you mm -hmm. want to, I think. Yeah, you can record from there or you can pre-do it. You know, a lot of my clients will send me, but also people are just kind of like, oh, it just takes, I keep having to redo it and redo it. You could just, what I do for a lot of my clients and you could do it yourself is just keep on going and just throw it into, you know, your video, video editing software and just edit out and make it flow through. And, and it's better that way other people, other times, you know, just people overthink it and they're like, oh, I don't like the way I look, right? Don't even go there, like, just do it. I tell you, it's like the best thing you could possibly do. Yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you here is like when you're dragging stuff over, so you can either do it in these big blocks or you can do it in different rows. So like if you wanted to go half and half and you wanted to put um, a picture on this side and then you wanted to put some text over here. So like if I'm making it, like here's the one I did before for him. So that's how you do, you have your picture here and you have your text here. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to get really, and I just figured out how to do this actually the other day, um, you can actually be really, Oh, it doesn't have to be like just half and half or just this, you can actually make it um, as whatever ratio you want it to be. Um, and that really helps too, like when you're trying to make a, <laughs> when I'm trying to do some content over here and it's not as big as I need it to be for the size of the, <laughs> the yeah. picture or whatever it is, I can just fool around with this and make it even or whatever. Um, so that's a good way to go as well. Um, if you want to be able to yeah. just, um, have it look really sleek, you know, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, and then you could write, you know, all about how much is going on in the, in the real estate market and you could fill that whole thing up. And then if you want to make something, um, it's going to keep the same ratio unless you change the ratio. So that if you want to go back to a full one, you have to bring it back there, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. And so, you know, the same thing, if you're going to drag over some content. Um, and this is like, sorry, go ahead. It sounds like when you're sending weeklies, you can kind of make the template one time and then you're cloning and you're not, do, the design part that you're doing now only really needs to be done once. Exactly, exactly. So, um, I mean, I can, well, I'll just finish it up here. You could, you would have put some more content in, you know, yeah, some text. Um, the other thing I really like are the buttons. So if you have something like, um, a lot of times I'll put in a listing, you know, and you'll put like the picture of the listing and whatever, see the listing now, click here, it drives it back. You want every single thing you put in your newsletter to drive back to your website always. Um, 
And yeah, so, one of my favorites, you know, we talk a lot about these niche landing pages and funnels. So, you know, click for a list of foreclosures now or something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and you can also, and I don't have it on his, but like if you look at, let's see, I think I did it on, yeah, Megan. So this is another um, example of someone's I've done. Like she, this is, she used the core video. Um, these are just out of her risk media or I think even current matters account. Um, but even though it's keeping current matters, we still posted it to her blog so that when they go to read more, it will go back to her actual blog post. Sure. Um, and then we have all of these. These are all home searches for her little areas in town. And this, we did this once and yeah. it stays that way the whole time. And the market thing I made once and I just go into Canva and change the numbers and re-import it. So that's super easy to do. Um, for her, she does like a, she's big into charities. So she'll give me a different charity every time. And this is kind of where I use the button. The button um, goes back to her website that goes to the charity. Um, and then the bottom, I always do a, a home value search and I just a search for homes and then, you know, their signature or whatnot. So um, what was I doing here? I forgot. Cool. So, so you get, and I noticed, I don't know if everybody else noticed that the, the GIF, it was animated, the video. I thought that was really cool. <laughs> well, that's because if you can do it one of two ways, you can either, um, you can either you go to content. You can do a regular video without having core video. Yeah. Um, and then all you have to do is put the URL for YouTube in there or whatever, but it's stagnant and they still have to click it and it still has to go to YouTube. Whereas if you use core video, it's moving. And you're, I just find the click rate is much, much higher when you have like this animated moving um, part of it, which is why I like core video a ton. Yeah. Um, and then at the bottom, if you wanted to do rows again, you could, and like I said, I always do, you know, a home search box. All right. So you probably have some images you use for that and, and repeat. Well, like I said, once you put these in, um, probably on the last page, because I did it you know, there right here. Once you put them in, then um, they're there. Like I said, you can just clone the next one over. Yeah. If that makes sense. Um, and I do want to show you guys one other thing about I do that already. So Adele's asking, I want to go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go um, ahead. You can change the padding on it, which I also these going. Uh, go ahead. It's this is taking a minute. That's all right. Yeah. So there was a question about whether we're going into blogs and design a site. And this this is touching base. Uh, we're we're focused here on the actual sending out of the newsletter, uh, but the newsletter itself. Uh, as we mentioned up top with Heather can be integrated with the blog post you're putting on the site. I want to share with everybody too. I do think there are plans for us to make the blog editor uh, in line with this editor. Uh, I think the product team is planning on making it the same thing. Um, so when you create your blog post, you'd be working out of the same thing, Heather. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so like, as you can see, I put these on, but it looks kind of weird because they're so close together and you can, you can fix that. I know it's a little thing, but I just like things to look so um, you can add, you know, padding on each side. It's a lot. If anyone's ever used Mailchimp, it's just it's a lot like it. Um, it's really easy to use. And then I'd put their footer in. Again, you're going to have to put a diff. Uh, if the footer is across the way, you're going to have to put a new row in because the other row was split. Do you use the dynamic content much? What do you mean? Uh, there's that dynamic content block. Annalisa, I'm forgetting, is that for listings or for searches? There are a lot of different options within that. And when she oh. pops back in, we can take a look. But basically, yeah. you can drag over a call to action to add a triple image of a specific listing, a single listing image, uh, mm -hmm. agent header information, uh, click to see this listing kind of thing. They're just different calls to action you can drop in there. Hi. Just learned something. <laughs> See, and I was thinking, Heather, like you started like right when I started with conversion, I think, because I remember we were both yeah. kind of like there going, okay, here we go. <laughs> right. Um, it's just taking a while. It won't go to the last page. I was going to put the footer in, but 
Um, I'll just put this footer in for now. Anyway, so that's so once you have the footer, once you have all that stuff in, um, you could do that. So I'm gonna go back to the content and see what this is uh, dynamic content is all about. So that sounds pretty cool. Oh, yeah, and then so. you can just basically choose what you want to be married up to it. So is it schedule a showing, view a listing, see the agent header. So you could click you know agent header and it'll just drop it in from everything on the site that's part of their uh, profile. But you can't see it previous? No. Mm -hmm. it, so anything, if you wanted to preview it, you would need to send yourself the test. Even you, this preview won't work either? Nope. Okay. Yeah, I think that has to do with the way they, they're pulling in. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would have to see what it looked like. Um, because I do do listings too, but I'll just do like three on, right. pictures on Canva and just pop it in as a picture or whatever. But um, sure. But I don't know. So if the listings, if they, is it if they click on any image or? Yeah, this really comes in handy. So if you ever go into the scheduled mass email and choose uh, open house, new listing, uh, something to do with a new listing, mm -hmm. you can actually just drop the MLS number into a field and it fills out the entire newsletter for you. Okay. So I guess I'm wondering how that works here. So I, I did triple listing. Now, where do I put the MLS number in at? Well, from here, it, I don't think it would really marry to what you're building. So you, with this one, you might want to use like the agent header or the agent photo, office photo, uh, things that are to do with the agent and the newsletter, not necessarily a single listing. Oh, so this will not work unless you're... Right. I mean, you could, yeah, I wouldn't think so because you don't have a way to link it. Yeah, you know, usually it's up top above the template. Right? Yeah, and it's tied yeah. to a specific template. So they it's just kind oh, of how it's okay. labeled. But for like this one, you could pull in the agent header if you wanted to. And I'll, I'll see if I can get some samples of what those look like. Um, okay. But if you just go into like the regular uh, template in the scheduled mass email, then you can choose new listing or open house and pop in the MLS number and it fills it all in for you and adds the scheduling buttons. Cool. All that good stuff. At least there is the MLS ID above the content block here. If you scroll up, Heather, see where it says MLS yes. ID. Yeah, there it is. So it's right above the body of everything, right above preview, send test. You can Further add your up. MLS. Yeah. So you could drop that in there and oh, add the MLS ID there. that ties okay. in. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And then it'll those blocks will grab the, the yep. info that's connected to that ID. I gotcha. Okay, yep. perfect. Yeah. yeah, it's really cool. But nice. for everybody watching, I think I think the key thing here is if you Heather, we're kind of swiping your methodology here. You've got certain types of content in there. Um, right. you know, you've got a header, you've got maybe a listing or two, you've got some links to other listings, maybe a video from the right. agent, and you can kind of build out, you know, do something unique for yourself. This is a great one. Yeah, this is, so this guy, he does a bunch of um, like pre-construction condos. That's his thing up in Toronto. Um, and so he does a virtual, this one was a virtual open house, but he does every week, he does a, a Facebook live as well. And so we put, always put, um, his Facebook live in there. And so you can have click links out to the Facebook live, um, cool. you know, links out to your Calendly, um, you know, all your, he does like a lot of exclusive listings where it's like the pre-construction stuff. You know, if you wanted to do, I do a lot of like stuff with messenger bots. And so I made him a messenger bot and he, you can click here and start talking to him on Facebook messenger. Um, and this is what I did for his list, like his listings. So I guess what you're saying, you could only do one listing, I guess, for that dynamic content. You couldn't do more than one. Oh, yeah. You know, I've okay. never tried to stack them. I've never tried to drag another one in to see. Okay. So I could fool around with it and report back. Okay. Yeah. We always <laughs> do like two hot properties. Um, and then he always has his, his video in there. It's, it's that's just amazing. That, that's awesome. If I got that email, I couldn't resist clicking it. That, that's right. This <laughs> click rate is really high compared yeah. to like, you know, if you don't have a, a video on there that's moving like that. Yeah. What do you do? So I see the subject line, Toronto Real Estate Update. Join me this weekend. Do you try to keep it always like Toronto Real Estate Update? So I always do the first thing the same and then the second part, something grabbing you know what i mean but you want them to know like i keep i get this every month or i get this every week yep. that's the same thing you're looking for but then the content after i find that that really works yep. the best that's a good tip and then you could even in the body of the email tell them to create a filter or save it, it, if people really want the info hey save yeah. my emails are always going to come with toronto real estate mm -hmm. update in them yeah um 
you know, if you, if people watching, if you want to do that and like train your, uh, your leads to open your stuff to the future, maybe in that first email, you do a PS and say, Hey, I'm going to be sending you more valuable information coming forward. Uh, mm -hmm. and it's always going to start with Toronto real estate update or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we do that all the time. And that, this is the blog that I do for him. It's he want his are more like, he wants to say like super real estate, um, related, but we do a real estate blog. So it depends on, you know, what you want your content to be. Most of my blogs are more fun local stuff, but do you, do you usually, how do you find it? Do you usually just Google around for what's going on and then rewrite stuff in your own words or. or... Uh, I actually, I have a couple of bloggers that I oh, yeah. that work for me and I just say, <laughs> I need a blog every Monday for this city. And they do the research and they do the, the writing. And I, I mean, I used to do it myself when I was really small, but I, yeah. would take up all my time now. So I don't, I don't do that. Cool. So you yeah. have a team, you have a team who can write the content. That's great. Yeah. 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 I have a, I have a couple different, I have an East, actually I have an East coast person or West coast person. So depending on where they are, I, I put them, please. I have like some kind of knowledge of what's, <laughs> what things are like, where they are or whatnot, but yeah. Cool. And then, so once the, the newsletter is created, um, you then you have the template ready. And then mm -hmm. I assume you go into just the smart CRM and just hit mass send, or do you schedule it? Uh, it depends on the, uh, on the client, like certain clients want it to be on the same exact time at the same exact, whatever. See, because sometimes see if with me, it depends like this particular client, I love him, but he is late all the time. So, you know, he might send me the video and then I'm like, oh crap, it should have went out two hours ago. And I just got to hit send and send it, you know, but, yeah. um, because some things like the video I can't do for him, he's got to do it. Uh, for other things like the Boise one, I have it scheduled every month because I have all the content and there's nothing he needs to give me. Right. So. Um, there's, there's a question about, do you need to do anything with the, the advanced, with the email to track stats or will automatically be tracked? Uh, I, I, I think you're referring to whether or not you're getting opens. I don't yeah. know if a way to track overall, like MailChimp doesn't, if there is, I would love to know. Usually I just go to the dashboard and kind of see mm -hmm. how many people have clicked and opened and kind of scroll down through it. Or, you know, inside of the, each person's thing, it will tell you if they opened it. But I don't know if maybe Wait. Core has a way to say this particular email got this many opens or this many clicks. I know it's on the roadmap. I don't know when though. Yeah. 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 It's just, so like anybody who's wanted to see like the analytics of those opens, on your dashboard when you're looking at your activity stream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can then use that little uh, picker. Yeah. So if you go to see the emails, yeah. To your dashboard and then you go to, I think, email events is the thing you want to go to to see. Um, of course, it will take eight years for me to load this while I'm running. But yeah. yeah. So you can see if email, you know, the emails open, emails clicked. Um, these are all, we, have, we haven't sent his out in a long, it's been it's actually his is coming up next week to send out. So it, it wouldn't be here, but you'll see it like, cause you'll see the, the name of the, oh, here is Boise Butchers. Like this person just opened it a day ago, which is weird because we haven't sent it out in a month or whatever, but you can see if people opened it and if they've clicked on it. Yeah. It's always surprising because we all work kind of, you know, realtors too listening. We all work online and we check our email every day, but there's a lot of people who you might think they're not replying to you, but they kind of only check their email once a week or once a month. <laughs> well, that's how I am with my personal email. I mean, I'll be like, oh crap, the school emailed me like a week ago and I didn't get yeah. back to them because my work email, I'm on it like all day long, but my personal email, I, oh, every couple of days, every once a week sometimes for sure. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. So you, so if you can send out, we're, I'm just reading the question here. Um, can you send out a thousand emails or is it just 250? Um, and at least the schedule oh, lets you do more. Yeah. Right? yeah. So here's here's what I would suggest, Rob. He was asking, can you send out a mass email of a thousand or will it, you know, mess with your open rate? Can you just send out a thousand emails or is it just 250? So you've got two mass email possibilities in KB Core, the first of which is via your smart CRM. And you can actually make your column. Uh, up to 250 people that you can email or mass text at a time. Or if you want to send out something that's huge, I mean, I think some agents send out a 16,000 emails Don't on, do that. on a scheduled mass email, but I'm just saying do that. that's like pushing it. 
well, it kind of bogs things down just a titch oh, um, and it works. It works. It just is going to send it out in batches. So don't listen to Ryan. That's well, I'm just saying any local year. agent who has 16,000 people they're emailing to, I, wor- I worry about. It's a lot. Is it really about- targeted? No. Yeah, where'd you get that list from? Because I know what you did. Yeah. So, well, I don't know. Um, like the guy in Toronto, he's been in the business for ever, yeah. probably. Years. He has over 10,000 people, and they all came out of his. I actually imported them for him. They came out of his iCloud. Wow. You know? That's awesome. Yeah. yeah I yeah. talked with a guy in Southern California today. He's like, I got 21,000 people. I'm like, well, let's just give you a CSV file. Let's get those guys <laughs> in there. Um, but you can of- go into your scheduled mass email right, via yeah. marketing, and then you can send out a huge amount of email at all at the same time. Yeah. So okay. you could send out something targeted or something that's massive. So and it just, just goes so out in batches know, and is fine. You, I don't, you can't send out an email to everybody in your database. You have to choose something here yeah. mm-hmm. or a filter or a hashtag. So what I do for this is I go to your smart CM and I make either, I call it a newsletter filter or a subscribe filter. And I just filter for everyone with a valid email that is subscribed. And that way, because a lot of times that 20,000 people, half of them don't have a valid email. Aren't it's so handy. That's yeah. a good hack. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So if you go to your filters and just do it that way, um, you can you pin them. In there, you can choose that. Heather, do you ever pin them up to the top that that particular search for yourself might, might be a time saver. I don't just because I don't like to mess with my right. client's stuff, right. you know, but they, a lot of my clients have pinned stuff across the top, but I don't do, I, I kind of know where my stuff is and I don't mess with it because I don't want them to have to. So like, what is this here? Before so we, what you can do guys is oh. you can, you can, if you have the same group that you're sending a newsletter to every week, you can just kind of run the filter once and save it as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, I do it's save the filter. I just don't put it up at the top. So I just don't yeah. pin it. So like yeah. I'll do subscribed and has email and then I apply the filter. And And real, real quick, Rob was saying, even if you don't have Gmail suite or G suite, so yes, you can use our scheduled mass email and it doesn't have anything to do with G suite. It goes out through our servers. So you're good to go. Yeah. So, and then, and then right here is where you'd save that filter and you could save it newsletter or subscribed emailers or whatever you want to do. And so that when you go in, I mean, I already have it, I already have this saved for him as newsletter, but. It's a live list that just keeps adding as you add contacts, which is awesome exactly yeah i'm a giants fan i keep seeing ellie manning on the screen there's a contact in there it's totally throwing me off oh sorry. it's my boy eli's in there but it's ellie all right <laughs> distractions so so but this is really cool the process heather then uh that anybody can duplicate is kind of build your first template mm-hmm. um you know figure out what you want that to look like every week uh i assume uh, whether there's probably a time every week that you want to block out in your calendar to do this, this effort uh, where you pop the content in and you just send it out. Yeah. Um, so like if you, once you have it, you can just take your last one and clone it. And then, like I said, you've got everything in there. You just have to pull out, just switch out the content, which is nice. So any other links or any other stuff you've done will stay. And let's go back, you know, to the reason why here. I mean, the reason why is you, you, we need to do something that differentiates us from, from the competition. So, um, right. and, and most agents that I know of aren't consistently doing this every week or once a month. Um, and so definitely. Yeah. You can do that, especially with a video, I think is is really huge. And I use this editor too for videos for like to drop into campaigns, you know, if you wanted to do, um, you know, like even your initial welcome, thank you for signing up. If it's a video from you instead of, yeah, you know, just thanks for signing up, you know, um, it's different, you know, I have a guy that does a a whole video on for all his Zillow leads. Like you, you've been getting calls from all these agents. You want to stop. Here's how blah, blah, blah. And that's his video that he sends out and he gets a really good response rate for it. Um, so, but you can definitely use that for your, with the core video. Yeah. Yeah. You, you've said it too. It is probably the best thing you can do if you, on the conversion front, if you have steady leads flowing in and you're not already sending a welcome video, I mean, Mm -hmm. yeah, the, the cost of core video is negligible when you think about that, what, what it can do for you. 
Well, and it's cheaper than, I mean, having bomb bomb to begin with, so. Yeah. Uh, uh, question is why clone, uh, somebody's asking why they would clone the template. The, the reason you do that is you take the one you sent last week and you just clone it and then you change the content out and send it this week. Right, so I don't have to put the header in again. I don't have to put, you know, all the footers and stuff in again. I just can take it out and clone it. Yeah. So, yeah, this is like we did a listing, the listing button or whatever. This is one of the first ones we ever did, but <laughs> you can tell he likes to drink. <laughs> you got the distilleries and the breweries. I swear yeah. to God, we do other things. But <laughs> now, craft beer people are, are, are rabid. Yeah. <laughs> really um, so guys, you know, if you're sitting here thinking, well, I don't have time to do this every week, uh, I'll give you a little plug again, Heather. It's virtualrealtyassist.com, right? Yeah. Um, so it's easy enough to do on your own, um, you know, but if you're in a situation where your time, maybe your time is worth more than than you would pay uh, somebody like Heather to do it, then, then there are options out there. And I, I highly recommend Heather's shop. So um, yeah, virtualrealtyassist.com. And you can do that and you could also just um if you want to message me um on facebook you can do that too i can see how i could get you my link here yeah. so there's a question about whether you do social media content i'll let you too do you, do you want to talk about some of the things that you some of the services you perform and maybe some of the things that you find are the most effective uh, for, for somebody's business that you know the services you provide where would some where should somebody start um I'm the same. So people with will sign up for these. There's companies that do it, right? They're like, they just post things to your social media. Mm -hmm. And the interaction is low, right? Like it just is not, it's just generic information. And again, if you want to do um, something that's more targeted to your area, then you really should be doing something that is more local to you. So what I the service I provide is I post once a day to your Facebook, but I go through and I, when I first sign you up with me, I have a list of different local places I can go to find links. And then, um, and I post those and I schedule those out for the week for you. So like, I can show you, let's see. Um, do you use a posting tool or do you log into the agent's account? Is it I they make me an admin on their Facebook page Got and it. I then I can post I the they keep changing the whole creator thing on Facebook it's driving me nuts but um you can you can schedule it out for the week and you can also post to Instagram there Instagram is a whole different animal though it, it you're not really wanting to post um articles because you can't put links in there yeah. so you want to do more things. I, I have a guy, a couple of people who send me pictures of places around town and I will post that to their um, Instagram and that kind of stuff or pictures of them or things that they're doing, but um, you don't really want to post the same things. That cracks me up a little. So they take the time to send it to you, but they don't, they don't post it. I'm not, I'm not poking fun, but, but I, I can see, I mean, if, there are, if you're in a situation where you're super busy and you don't, just don't have time for this stuff, it totally makes sense to hire somebody reliable and just get it done, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the other thing I would say to people is um, if you want to, um, where's my computer? There she is. Uh, if you want um, to use Instagram to definitely get Linktree if you're using Instagram and put all of your squeeze pages in your Linktree um, because you can only have one link up the top of your Instagram and have it there. Yeah. Maybe it actually came up last week too with uh, Kelly, right? Right, Annalisa? Yeah, Linktree is pretty awesome because you can have one clickable link, but then it kind of branches off to five other links. So you could like say, click here to get evaluation, click here to see all the foreclosures, click here to read my newsletter or whatever, uh, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and it's not just five, like you can do as many as you want. Actually. Oh, yeah, I've just seen the five, but that's good to know too. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. So um, this is just a, a kind of what, a thing that I do for a client here, right? So um, this is just about, he's on the Oregon coast. So I just try to keep it coast-like. Mm -hmm. um, like this is their sandcastle contest that they do every year, but now it's virtual, the for sale things he does. But, um, do you but find you know, it, it, sorry. Do you find that the engagement and the reach goes up as you post more content that that, that Facebook rewards the page? Yes and no. It kind of depends on um, what your 
reaches to begin with. Like I have clients who they only have like 12 followers. And so it's, it's hard that way. But if you start with a good base of followers, then I would say, say definitely yes, for sure. Um, if you only have 12 followers, that's totally your fault. You need to invite every person that you know <laughs> to follow your Facebook page. And you can also, you can also run ads to the page and, and, and build up a follower base if you're driving to the right content. You can, yeah, you can too. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so we just try and post things that are more, um, more local yeah. to people that people care about in their local communities than generic stuff. Cool. Well, I don't know. Are there any other questions? Anybody? I thought, Heather, thank you. I thought it would be, it was just good to see those templates and to see them in action. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it doesn't need to be overthought. You're just dragging blocks in. You have different types of content. You get a, you get a template for yourself and you just send it every week. If you mm -hmm. can't, if you don't have time to do it, there are people out there who, you know, outsource. Um, and that's, that's what virtual realty assist Heather's shop is, is about if you're interested. So, um, Anything else, guys? Anything else, Annalisa? Anything else, Heather? Any tips or tricks, Heather, for KV Core that you want everybody to know before you get off today? Oh, <laughs> Where I do was... she begin? <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, it, I think that um, I, I, I just want to say, like, I've worked with when I, I started my business, I wasn't KV Core specific, and I really niched down into it now uh, just because it really is the best and I'm not trying to whatever, but it, it's the best platform out there. It does so much. But I think the only problem with it is it because it does so much, people feel overwhelmed sometimes. And so that's why people pay, pay me yeah. <laughs> to do yeah. stuff for them. Um, but yeah, yeah. Awesome. The, and it, it, the easiest way to get a hold of me actually is if you go to my um, my business page for virtual realty assist, you can, you can message me there and I'm happy to help. Shoot a face message. Okay, well, th thanks again, Heather. Uh, we'll definitely share the replay with everybody uh, tomorrow. And uh, again, just feel free to reach out to Heather. And Heather, I hope to have you on again sometime. I know you're, you're doing some cool stuff with Messenger bots and, and some other things. So, yes, I love many chat Messenger bots for sure. Yeah. That's my, that's we we have a, we have a bot that we sell in the marketplace, but I I, I think um it, I think if if you want something very customizable, that would probably be you, right? I assume you're you're doing customizable. Yeah, bot. it's customizable, but it's also I don't know how yours works. But once people subscribe, they become a subscriber to your bot, and then you can run Facebook ads back to them through yeah. Facebook Messenger. Mm -hmm. Which, if you look at the open rates for an email, it's really low, and you know text is a little better. But Facebook Messenger open rates are like your highest right now, and so. Um, it's a great not, way to, to message back to people. Not to put you on the spot too much, but if somebody had our messenger bot, would you, do you run the Facebook ads for people if, if the I, bot was already built? Um, I would have to see how okay. it worked. If I, if it would work, because the way that I, because there's two ways to do it in case, or there's two ways to do it in um, Facebook ads. You can run a Facebook messenger ad, which I think is, kind of crap <laughs> because it doesn't, people don't want to message you right then, right? They don't want that. They just want to go to the listing. Right. So instead of saying message me about this listing, what I say is learn more and they fill out that the, the um, form like Lead they do form. when they hit submit, but instead of landing them on their Facebook page or their um, KV core page with the listing, it pops open their Facebook Messenger. It gives them the link. You're still giving them exactly what they promised you, but then it starts asking you questions. And it's a much better way because if you're you're not getting as many leads, and also if you do a Messenger ad, you're not getting the lead. You're just getting a message. So this way, you're getting the lead and the message. If that makes sense. It does. But I had heard about this approach around. a while back and completely forgot about it. Um, yeah. So this was worth the cost of admission for me today. I hope everybody's <laughs> listening. If you're running your own Facebook, yeah. Network, this is a little, this is one of those little buried tactics that could be, that could make or break your ad campaigns. Heather's basically redirecting <laughs> after a lead form submit into a messenger bot. Um, yeah. So here's I like forgot about that. that. Yeah. Um, I can show you. And what you can do is you can tag people based on what they tell you. So I'm trying to find a, a paid account. You, in order to tag very well, you have to do a paid account, but literally yeah. it's $10 a month. It's so cheap. Yeah. Um, but like, here's an audience for this. I've been running ads for this person forever. She's got over two, 2,000 people that are subscribed and we send back, you know, stuff all the time. But 
based on what they tell me, if they tell me they're a homeowner, they're going to be tagged as such. So I can pull up every homeowner in the thing and we can just run and add back to them. Or, you know, if they're relocating, you know, a relocation guide or whatever it is. Um, I love many chat so much and it's, and not, and that's the thing, like not all these people will interact with the bot, but they're still going to be in KV core because they filled out the form to begin with. Yeah. So you get so the lead, you get the lead and then always get the lead. Sometimes yeah. you'll get the messenger um, sign up, but if, if you're you writing a conversation ad, right there, right after they submit the ad, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so it starts asking them questions and then you can just pop in and take over from there if they're, you know, I may, I may chase you uh, down uh, Heather, next week, but just to, I, I'd like to record, I kind of know how to do this, but it might be cool to just show how you do it. And you and I can just do a private video and drop it in the members area um, mm -hmm. about what that looks like. Um, just, I actually have a YouTube video on my, on my oh. channel about it, but. <laughs> Good, that'll save you some time. Yeah, if you want to share that, I'll pop it in the members area. That'd be, that'd be okay. great. All right. I was going to say, she's closer to me. I didn't even realize you were in Portland. I'm over in Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> so now that we're like, I'm gonna be like, well, I'll just go chase her down for you, Ryan. Yeah, <laughs> spread across the bridge. <laughs> well, Perfect. thanks again, Heather. Uh, we're okay. coming up on the hour, and uh, we look forward to seeing you here soon. And uh, thanks everybody else for watching. We'll be back Tuesday at 4 p.m. Thank you. All right, see you guys. Bye.